artist. But in the 20, early 21st century, I think, unfortunately, it's still a clear hold over the late 20th century and the definition of an artist. And I think the ones that thought they were hip and the alternative and the underground and the cool ones and the ones wearing black, the ones that followed punk and all that, even though I started fucking punk and have no connection to it, in fact, rejected, still abide by the Warholvian lie that great art equals commerce. You can't be a great art artist unless you're successful. And that's from Andy's point of view. Where in fact he was a lousy artist. He was very conventional. He was doing mimeographs. He was photocopying anything you or I could not ourselves do, blow it up and put it on a wall. The art is making yourself the artist that can and he was purchased. So I've done a body of work that now through the internet the world can see and from all corners of the world they are moved by it. They see the genuineness of the art. The one thing in my case that separates me from that philosophy of Andy Warhol is the location. I've stayed, or mostly I've created my art in Toronto, which is like one big rehab center and a place for world artists to come to cool down. Uh, and I haven't remained for a length of time in New York or in London, where it would then go to the next logical uh, level. And I've avoided Los Angeles completely because of uh, my own, my own reasons, mostly my grandmother who lived, was raised in Hollywood, grew up in Hollywood. So I'm not a stranger to like how, you know, the life, you know, the whole thing of that, but it intrigues me not, a, not at all. Mostly I think because I've never seen anything intriguing ever come out of California in, in rock and roll, in other milieus I have, in other art I have. I mean, I think Santana, are a better fucking rock and roll or a Californian group or Steppenwolf from Toronto who moved to California. Steppenwolf from Toronto who took over California is the best Californian act, the Canadian Californian act. And same holds true with Neil Young who split from Young and Davisville, drew, drove down to uh, Laurel Canyon, got Buffalo Springfield, and that was the best Californian man. Anyway, so that's that in California. But the thing is, is being an artist. And uh, so, yeah, the art will be to give birth to the art that I've already established. And that's that's what I was going to say on the camera. So that'll be edited that last bit. No, I won't. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. I don't know how that looked or sound. Fantastic, as always. Thank you, Stephen. I was just thinking of a thread about uh, Toronto and location. Art, being a star, a musician. And uh, it's, it's pretty apparent to me that the greatest California hard rock acid band of all time, then and now, was Steppenwolf from Toronto, John Kay, going to Thornhill Collegiate, stone throw from here, and that the American Southern, especially Southern, songbook, the entire, the entire story of America's struggle with the South and the Civil War and the race was written by Canadian boys, by Robbie Robertson, who grew up in the Six Nations, just a very, and Garth Hudson, who grew up in Niagara, Rick Danko, um, the, the, the whole thing, the whole thing. And, uh, and if you wanted to get really, I mean, now I'm getting a little too awake, this might be edited, but the biggest acts in Vegas right now, the biggest country star, American country star, is Shania Twain if one equates success with dollars, with money, with audience, it's Shania Twain. 
and it won uh, a great success with money and the box office and how many people see a Las Vegas act year after year after year after year. It's a poor girl from outside of fucking Quebec City uh, with the big nose, uh, Celine Dion, who's four shows a night as hard as Elvis Presley, rules Las Vegas. And when she's not, the Montreal Circus Troupe, Cirque du Soleil, rule Las Vegas, rule America. So therefore, today your love, tomorrow the world, I will take over America. <laughs> the greatest so-called American beat writer, the godfather of beat, the godfather of the whole fucking movement, Jack Kerouac, ladies and American scumbag germs, who grew up in Lowell, Massachusetts, is from Quebec, from just outside of Montreal. His parents couldn't speak a word of Americanese. They spoke Quebecois and had no intention of going down to New Orleans, which is also Quebec, when the brothers haven't inhabited it. Mm, that's a fact. And Jack is the greatest Canadian writer of all time that America has embraced by these Canadians. His passport was, he had a dual passport, but he didn't need one in those days to travel, but he's also, so you got that. That's all for that, that's all for that. Discombobulated. And we can go Glenn Gould, Marshall McLuhan. Now why is Marshall McLuhan the world's greatest thinker? America's greatest thinker is someone like Howard Stern. Howard Stern versus Marshall McLuhan. That's what you've come to accept as intellectualism. As the sirens wail, the slinky sirens wail. So there's a little bit of anger in what I say because of America's naivety and non-acceptance of things non-American. But the examples I point out are all Canadian. <laughs>